portion of the job will include shot blasting. The equipment being used is going to be a magnet cart to collect loose shot, two inch hose, 110 volt cords, eight inch, 110 volt shot blaster, and a three motor, 110 volt HEPA back. The floor is being diamond ground because of elevation inequalities in the slab. These are at the joints as well as some serious deflection throughout the slab. So the grinder is needed to make the floor more flat. The vacuuming that's being done is being done quickly because the fine dust that's in the pores will be removed by the shop blasting. So the vacuum wand is really only being used to collect the bulk of the dust that's on the surface of the slab. The shot blaster cleans the surface by agitating it with steel shot. This is similar to a sand blaster, except it is a captive system. That means the shot that's being thrown at the floor rebounds along with the dust that it agitates under negative pressure and then extracts it back to the dust collector. The shot is recycled as the process takes place, but of course in time the shot will eventually become used up. It becomes light and basically dust itself and then goes to the dust collector. So that means the machine is only really ever reloaded with the steel shot. Again, similar to a sand blaster, it requires immediate to do the work that it does. With a shot blaster, it's steel shot. As the process takes place, of course, the, the surface of the concrete becomes visibly more clean. The amount of dust that's been left behind is partially because the vacuuming was only done half-heartedly but also because the mineral dust that's created during the grinding process has been packed into the pores of the surface of the concrete. Vacuuming alone, even numerous times taking more time than what was taken here, still would not get the floor as clean as the shop blaster. And that is a function of the machine agitating that surface under negative pressure. It's like a sand blaster or a power washer, but of course done dustless and dry. Once the shop blasting is complete, inspection of the surface shows that there is damage that the concrete either revealed through the shop blasting or grinding or was already there. This floor was going to be primed with a water-based epoxy, but based on the condition of the floor after the grinding and the blasting, the water-based epoxy would not fill these defects before the, the body coat of the epoxy is applied. Before applying any epoxy or any coatings, the surface is tested for humidity as well as the ambient air temperature and humidity to establish dew point. The surface of the slab does not have too high humidity for the epoxy and the dew point is over 30 degrees away. So it is an acceptable range to be able to apply 100% solids epoxy. The epoxy being used is 100% solids fast cure epoxy because the slab temperature is under 60 degrees and also because the next day the hope is to be able to apply that 15 mils of 100% solids over the top of this skim coat. That's why the fast cure material has been chosen instead of a standard cure because that slab is below 60 degrees. The skimming of the surface of the concrete is pretty obvious as it's being done. It's simply drug back and forth across the surface of the concrete with an effort made to not leave puddles or excess material because once this is cured enough, this is going to get the epoxy directly applied over it. The main purpose of this epoxy being applied this way is to fill in those voids that were exposed. The next day, the surface is cured enough to be able to walk on it and then subsequently still within the recoat window, apply that 100% solids epoxy.